This is part two of how to build this awesome river coffee table. Let's get started. If you haven't seen part one of this video, I'll link it down in the description and in the pinned comment. Basically in the first video, we prepped the black walnut slabs and then did the epoxy pour. In this video, we're going to turn this slab of walnut and epoxy into a beautiful river coffee table. So the first step in the process is we need to flatten the slab. And for that, I'm using this router sled from Crafted Elements. The way I think about this router sled is that it's basically a CNC that's powered by you instead of a computer. And we'll be able to take a twisted or uneven slab and make it perfectly flat with this router sled. I love this sled. I will leave a link to it in the description and you'll see me use it here in just a second as well. So the next step in the process, once I have some initial assembly complete, is I'm going to take off this plastic um, piece on my router, and then we're going to mount the router directly to this plate here. The nice thing about this Crafted Elements um, router sled is they have holes drilled for all types of routers. So I have a Milwaukee router, but if you have a DeWalt router or a Bosch router, uh, basically any kind of plunge router, you'll be able to find the pattern that fits your router here. So right now I have the router sled totally assembled right here on my board of centipede table. Obviously I'm gonna need a bigger table, which I knew I just wanted to go ahead and assemble this. What I'm going to do is go to the hardware store and get a three quarter inch um, piece of premium plywood that will be perfectly flat. And I'm actually gonna um, support it on two Bora centipede bases. Once we do that, we'll be able to you know, extend these two rails and you'll be able to put a massive slab uh, in between the two rails to plane it. I'm building the router sled table out of one sheet of premium plywood. You see me here cutting off some strips of the end and I'm going to mount the side rails to these strips. That'll just give me a little more depth. Uh, I, can, I can route a thicker board in other words. This is a very solid router sled. You can tell it is made super, super well. The materials are great. Everything is perfectly aligned and true. Uh, I, I could really recommend this router sled. It will make planing and jointing boards and slabs much easier. The process for getting this slab level is just like if you were running it through a jointing jig in a planer. You just shim it up so that there's no rock in the, in the board and then we're going to start routing.
Here I'm giving the table a quarter inch round over. That makes a huge difference just on the, the profile of the table. So because, because this um, router sled left these kind of lines going perpendicular to the grain, I'm going to start with a more aggressive sander. Uh, this has got some 80 grit sheet sandpaper loaded up into it, and I'm going to go, of course, with the grain, but this should really help us, um, you know, take, the, take all these lines out, all these imperfections out, and then we'll eventually transition over to our disc sander. This respirator is really in my way, but it's very important to wear because we're sanding epoxy and black walnut, neither of which you want in your lungs. Now that we're done with the first round of sanding, it is time to put some finish on this table. I'm using Minwax, polyurethane, the semi-gloss, and a foam brush to apply this. Uh, I also usually wear rubber gloves when I am putting on any kind of finish, usually, just to keep your hands clean and safe. This tabletop should really pop when we start to put the finish on. We have some imperfections in our epoxy. This is maybe where uh, the router bit that we were using to surface this coffee table was getting dull and maybe it chipped out some epoxy, but we want to correct that now. What I'm going to be using is a little CA glue. It's got um, kind of a two-part glue, so you just fill in the hole, spray it with the activator, and in about 30 seconds, it's ready to sand. So it's a lot quicker than trying to backfill this with epoxy and then doing a lot more sanding. This is just fill it, spray, fill it, spray. Should go pretty quickly. Quick note about these legs, the standard for coffee tables like this is to inset the legs four inches from each end of the table. That just looks nice to the eye. One more thing I want to do to this coffee table before delivery is put a coat of wax on it. If you've been to a furniture outlet where the furniture feels so great to the touch, it might be because it has a great coat of wax on here. And so what I use, just a second, I use this Minwax Paste Finishing Wax. This is the stuff, you can get it at any kind of big box store. I just buff it on, let it sit for a few minutes and then buff it off and it's going to give this table an amazing uh, kind of final, final touch to the finish. You also, just a pro tip, you can apply this after delivery. So if you want to, you know, have the client watch you buff it out so it has that final kind of sheen and feel, you totally can. But uh, we're just gonna buff this on and then this, this table's done.
Thank you so much for watching this video. If you are thinking, this is an awesome build, but maybe before I do a giant epoxy project like this, I wanna start with something smaller. If that's you, I talk about how to make an epoxy serving tray in this video right here. It's packed with helpful tips. And actually what I did before I took on a bigger epoxy project is I started with something smaller like that. So check that out and we'll see you at the next build.